It's about memory. Generally, we think about memory in terms of remembering facts and dates and specific things that happen. Instead of launching a coup, we're not going to do this militarily. We're going to work within the democratic system. That's only a superficial understanding of memory. Memory, as we're thinking about it, means that students actually integrate what happened into their own lives so that it changes their lives, so that they come out of the project as different people. Each year, we try to do a Holocaust project that captures the hearts and the minds of the students. This year, the focus of the project was on photography and using photographs as an entryway into memory. It was, for me, very exciting to do this integrated project and really weave art into social studies and history and help the, the students to understand how we use visuals to communicate stories along with words. So these are again photographs taken by professional photographers who really wanted to capture what was important to these people. Um, it kind of made me feel kind of sad and like I think is weary a good word. Half her face is in like the light, while the other half is kind of in the dark. These windows are actually very similar to that, so I wonder if like this is his building or what it is. But I wonder if he took this picture with these this side a little bit blurred out, so you like didn't have to remember seeing all that stuff. He's standing in front of a white background. The photo is taken in black and white, which makes the photo look more sad. In my Robert Frank used natural light because he was outside taking a picture of a bus. I loved the things that you shared, the ideas that you had, the reflections. You guys, what really? is it that a photograph does in a way that just writing about it does not convey as powerfully? Dr. Ann Weiss came and she explained to students how she discovered this cache of over 2,000 photographs at Auschwitz. Virtually all the photographs that people brought to Auschwitz were destroyed. She taught students how to read, to analyze and interpret photographs, how to make meaning of the photographs. A member of the Jewish underground said, hide the photographs from this transport. Don't put them to be burned. His exact words were, if we can't save the people, let us at least save their memories. And for the eighth graders this year in the art program, we really are looking at identity. And we do a self-portrait, learning about an artist who did expressive self-portraits and always added symbolism along with the portraits that she did. And I have the students learn how to draw a face and then how to integrate symbols and images that convey their very person, their very identity. But it felt like a starting point for being able to do the bigger project, which was to interview Holocaust survivors or maybe that second generation. Okay, so I think you need to organize this, that yeah. there are questions for... But in preparing students to interview the survivors, we had to teach them about the interviewing process. How did it feel being treated differently as being Jewish or how did it feel to be labeled? And did these values change in any way because of the Holocaust? How did it feel to pretend to be like a religion you're not? So you want to think about organizing the questions so that there's some kind of flow. 
How did you view SS officials and Nazi soldiers when they first appeared in your community? Or did that make her lose hope? When like she moved to Chicago, what happened to him? What were Magda's parents' jobs when she was a kid? If a survivor says something in response to one of these questions that leads you to another question, follow up. When you learn about the individual stories of people that went through something so terrible, it's it's different than what you read in the history books. Okay, let me see if I can guess right. <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's easier. I guess. <laughs> Hello. 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 While we were all trying to hide and protect ourselves, there were people living during that same time period an entirely different lifestyle. His friends recruited him to leave his family to go to the forest to fight the Germans. Well, my survivor is named Marguerite Michigan. Uh, she was born in Belgium uh, during the war in 1941. It was more the loss of a mother and not knowing why. I was 11 years old and I never saw her again. I'm sorry. So here they were asked to bring all that they learned from analyzing photographs and studying photography in, in Ms. Sherman's class to then orchestrate the survivor to take the kind of picture that they thought most captured their story. So it's trying to show your past, what's behind you, can empower people coming forward. Look that line. But how can you, as a person, in some way connect to their story? And then how do you visually represent that in a photograph to show that connection? This is your reaction to her story. As you can see, I'm in the background blurry, which is kind of like her family's past. Can't define her future as like a Jew. What if you cropped it even more? I think that if you zoomed in a little more on you in the picture, it might help show what you're trying to a little more. I just can't wait to see what photographs they take and what story they're going to convey about themselves. They'll be on the windows and everybody will be able to see them and it'll be really cool. What surprised me, honestly, was the quality and the, the maturity level that uh, these guys showed in the preparation. These guys were 13, 14 years old. I said, are you kidding? Was, they're men. We didn't hold anything back about it. If you're going to teach it, yeah. you have to teach it. Absolutely. Absolutely. They listened so carefully um, that they took in all of the details and the nuances that they really understood it and asked all the right questions. And then to hear them tell it from their point of view, I think is very, very okay. impactful. <laughs> it could not be a better honor and tribute to my mom. It is wonderful. The girls put so much thought into it and so much love. Uh, I can't thank them enough. It fills my heart. These are my girls <laughs> and they're mine forever. I'm proud of them. We're very proud of you. Sorry, Do you think we could even imagine that it would be like this? You amazed us. The tears in their eyes when they heard their story told from the mouths of your children. It, we we became emotional like it, it, it felt like oh th there's this is why we're doing this project this is what it's all about and here we see a photograph of a student holding a candle in the darkness and in this photograph she's trying to represent this idea that even in the total darkness of everything there can be a ray of light. There can be hope. She'll carry that with her forever. <laughs>